one of the most important things you need to look at in your soil is calcium. What is your calcium level in terms of both parts per million and percent base saturation? We're going to talk about the importance of calcium today. Calcium is really important for the structure of your soil. You need enough calcium out there to have good pore space, to have good microbial life, good air movement, and also good water infiltration through your soil. Calcium is really important for nutrient uptake as well. In fact, it's been said that most nutrients come in on the back of calcium into your plants. You need calcium to be able to open that plant up and allow those nutrients to get in. So it's one of those really critical nutrients. However, for most farmers, they're looking at N, P, and K. How much nitrogen do I need? How much phosphorus do I have to apply? How much potassium do I need out in my soil? And they're kind of forgetting that the first thing they should be looking at is how much calcium I've got. One of the things Darren didn't mention with calcium is soil pH. If you have a low soil pH, the fix to that is quite simple. It's lime, it's calcium carbonate. Now, you want to be careful about this because if you put on too much calcium carbonate, you can actually raise the pH beyond where you want it to get to. And also, you've got to look at what crops are you raising. So, for example, if you're raising blueberries, well, blueberries like a 5, 5.5 pH. Corn likes about a 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4. Okay, if you're raising alfalfa, that prefers somewhere around a 7 pH. So you might want to vary this depending on your crop and your cropping rotation. But again, calcium is tremendously important when it comes to pH. One of the things that you want to look for on your soil test is your base saturation test. And if you don't have a base saturation on the soil test that you've been sending in, we'd strongly encourage you to get a complete analysis done where you have micronutrients and base saturation and more to look at. With base saturation, there are five nutrients that we're looking at, calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and hydrogen. And when we look at calcium, this one should occupy 65 to 75% of that base saturation test. If you fall somewhere in that range, your pH is generally going to fall in line, or at least relatively close, and you're going to have enough soil porosity to be successful with what you're doing with crop production. If you're below 60% calcium, in many cases, what we would ask is that you put some lime out there to try to raise that calcium up. Those five nutrients in base saturation add up to 100%. And if we're low in the calcium, we must be high in something else. Now, when Darren talks about 65 to 75%, let's say you have 90 or 95% calcium. Look, we're not telling you that in one shot, in one application of a bunch of other stuff, you can drop that calcium down to 75% and make it pay. Now, I'm not saying that wouldn't necessarily be a good thing for you to get the calcium down a little bit, but it's going to cost some money. You'd have to add some other products to it, and it really could take some time. So the big thing to focus on here is let's take a look at soil pH. Let's take a look at parts per million of calcium. And ideally, yes, if we're in that 65 to 75 percent range of calcium, that's great. If not, we should probably strive toward that range as a long-term goal on our farm, and usually we're going to have healthier soil. So to sum things up with calcium, it's important to look at the parts per million. It's also important to look at the base saturation percentage so you can start to determine what's going on, what am I high in, what am I low in, and do I need to add more calcium to help my crop. One other thing that will help your crop is controlling our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 